Hello everyone, this is Chris with Sticker Fab. I'm going to try to muster up a little bit of energy because I'm actually excited about this one. Today is daylight saving time and I'm a little bit tired, but I wanted to get an install done for myself, honestly. The Wolfbox G900, this is something we got onto our website, but it's something I've been looking at for a while and I probably would have purchased it even if I couldn't have sold it because what I replaced were our Blackview cameras and I wasn't sure how I felt about that, but I really like this upgrade. If you guys didn't know, what seems like a normal mirror, you can see back there, you can see how my view is obstructed, is actually a fully digital mirror like we have in our Defender. So you can see right there, I have a good view of what's behind me. If I scroll up on this side of the screen, I can adjust the rear view camera to go up or down. I can actually go as far as seeing my tire. There's the tape from the Blackview's rear camera. I need to get rid of that. And then if we scroll up on this side, I can zoom in and I can zoom right out. So that's kind of handy. I have trailered with this vehicle before, so I could check my trailer out and I could see right above it if it was not an enclosed trailer, if we had a vehicle on there or something. This really is one of those upgrades that you do and you can enjoy it each time you get in the vehicle. But I just want to give you guys a few tips when installing this. As you can see, there's actually three cables up in here. One is GPS. All these cables are going out the driver's side. Now, now there are already a bunch of videos on the internet on how to install these and how to install it in the actual Bronco application. There's at least two of them. Now, one of them said you had to remove all this trim. And honestly, you could, and you could push these wires even further than I have pushed them up there. But if you get right under here and you get the trim tool that comes with it and you start to peel this back, you can put all three wires up in here. Now they'll start to fall down and whatnot. You gotta give them a little slack and you gotta push them into the A pillar so that it retains that slack. I have a hard top and I opted to run the camera wire for the rear out this way. In a little bit, I'm gonna show you guys, if you have a soft top, I'm gonna to recommend you run it out that way because you're probably gonna to need to run the wire through the tailgate and the tailgate wire from the vehicle, from the factory already comes from the passenger side. So I ran the GPS down to right here. I mounted it basically right on top of my B&O logo. I stashed the rest of the wire right here in my A pillar. And this is my after my first drive, so I do need to push some of these wires back. I probably didn't see those. I did mostly install while I was in my garage early in the morning. And then continue to route the power wire and the rear camera wire, if you're coming down this side, down over here. Now, pull this panel back. Your wire will be laying kind of on top of all this trim. And then once you pull it into this area, you can tug it and start having the wire go down into this area. Once you do that, it'll push this trim back and you can use your trim tool to push the remaining wire in and around that so that you can't view that wire at all. Then pull these trim panels back. Pull this down. All you need to get this down is quick little pulls. Pull till you feel these pop and then pull on that side as well. If you reach your finger up this way and then down in here, your fingers will meet if you find the proper area. There's a couple holes in there. You just have to keep on reaching around until you can touch your fingertips. Then you're gonna run your power wire down into here. When you purchase this from our website, we give you the hardwire kit that actually has these bullet connectors and already have the proper ADA fuses available. So ultimately you'll have two of these boxes the factory one, you can set aside for a rainy day, but you want to use that second one that has these bullet connectors. And the fuse you want to use is basically two down on the right side for the accessory power. You can see that yellow line right there. You put your factory fuse on the bottom slot, and then it already comes with a fuse on the top slot you want this to point straight down or else it's backwards and it's not protecting the circuit. For the constant power, we chose this one 
There's the 20, 15, and the third one up. Also point that one down so the wire exits to the right. And then for the ground, we have this bolt here. Just loosen that up a little bit. And then we stuck the ground inside there, tightened it back up. Now I use a little tie right here to tie this up towards the top. So if I need to get back here again, it won't fall out all the way. For this vehicle, I do need to put our under searing fuses right there. Nice to have those labels conveniently placed. So now the only remaining wire that's going to go to the back is that rear camera wire. The way you run this should be the same on both sides. Like I mentioned earlier, if you have a soft top, I'd probably run it down that passenger side. So pull these panels back and grab that wire and pull it into here. All of your wires run back right through here. You're just gonna give this a quick pull, pull it up and tuck it in. I didn't take this panel off, but once I got it to here, I was able to pull this up a little bit and then tuck the wire into there. This panel splits right here. So pull the rest of the wire over there, get to the back of your vehicle and pull that wire into the bottom right there. Once you get right here, you can pull these panels up and run it along the middle. Pull this panel back right here. You'll see where the factory wire loom goes. Follow that path all the way back here. This was pulled off on the top and I ran the wire up behind here and straight through there. Coming to the back of the vehicle, that wire ran right through here. It's inside there, you can actually see it. And then up in here. You have three torques that you're gonna remove for the hard top. This one, this one, and this one right here. You wanna run your wires alongside the washer fluid and the hard top cables. This is the optional reverse wire. If you want to use your camera and have it go into the reverse mode with the lines each time you hit reverse and have that rear camera override whatever mode you're currently viewing. Install this one, the tail light's right there and you can hook it up to that circuit. I'm not running that because I'm gonna depend on the factory reverse, which already has the lines and is pretty good in my opinion. That camera is mounted in an area that's perfect for reversing and I don't wanna change looking at the mirror to reverse. You can use it as a secondary screen but I think the main one is probably the best for reversing. And then we come to the rear camera and mounting that. By factory, they have the mount that is set up for mounting it on the outside of the vehicle, but they give you this other bracket that gives you a little bit more adjustment. So what I did is I put that 3M that comes with it on the back of this, and then I used the two tiny screws and I used the screwdriver and just pushed them right into there. I kind of lined up the center of the vehicle and I made sure that camera was mounted directly in the center. Then you have a little aiming to do. And you can tighten it all up. You might be able to see the camera right there. Have a good view. What I did when I was checking this is I rolled forward a little bit and I do have mud terrains on this vehicle. So it's kind of bumpy at low speeds. And I did notice that the image was bouncing a little bit. So I put these little spacers right here. Basically there are acrylic chiclets from our auxiliary upfitter switches. I, I stack them all together and then I put a little tape at the end and I push that camera into it so that it would take that vibration away. I don't know if that's something that's gonna bug you guys. So if you're gonna need something like this, I can make it and place it on our site. Just leave a comment in the comment section below. So I had to have this little bit of standoff distance because there are these little spots in the rear glass. So I had to mount this just a little bit lower and I didn't want to mount anything to this rubber piece. That's what this is right here. There's rubber. So I have it mounted to plastic trim in the back. And for you soft top owners, you can run it all the way behind these panels and then along this, go back here, pop this panel off and you'll see the grommet that goes outside right here to your brake lamp and you can run it up along here and then mount it right here. So even if you want to do this to your Bronco Raptor or any other Bronco, I would suggest mounting it right on top of that third brake light. All right, you guys, again, super tired. I hope I didn't leave anything out. If I did, just ask those questions in the comments section 
and I'll get back with you. Please like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really helps us out. And hit that bell notification icon for the latest and greatest things we are working on for this vehicle.